Behold the lowly glue st No, fuck, it's not a fucking glue stick. It's a glow stick. Looks like a glue stick. Stupid brain. All right, so glow, uh, glow sticks are usually a uh, several, a mixture of several chemicals, and one of them is diethyl phthalate. It's a solvent used to dissolve the, you know, bis, what the hell is it? Oxalate, the oxalate, the glows, you know? Anyway, uh, why not see if we can't just, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to mix these two. Maybe I should use a knife. I want to try and get the, it may not be actually diethyl phthalate in here, but it's a, it's a possibility. Oh, I can feel the glass in there. Careful. Careful. So if you don't know what happens with glue sticks, I've got some leakage, that's good. Uh, there is two major components. One of is hydrogen peroxide, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And we're going to need some sort of air release up here to get this thing out. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, yeah, I think we got it. All right. Release the schmoe. Okay, there is I, what I assume is... I just don't know which is which, you know? What do you figure is in the inside? I, based on the viscosity of the stuff that's coming out of the tube portion, I'm gonna say that's our solvent. Remember when you used a mouth pipette? Don't do that shit anymore, do we? Okay. None of this stuff is really toxic. Oh, we got a third glass insert. All right, so let's assume that our glass contains the hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, there's no way it's that thick if it's... And the, surf, the stuff on the outside is our solvent. And you know it's not a it's not a crap load of a, of a solvent here. Let me if this is indeed diethyl phthalate, I don't have a, sh a crap load here, but it may not be necessary to just inhibit the polymerization of the epoxy a little bit in order to or whatever it will. I actually don't know. I would assume it disrupts some of the cross linking in the epoxy as it polymerizes, and then you know that ends up making a softer plastic. We're not actually making a thinner plastic here. We're making a softer plastic. So that may be all that we'll need. We'll find out. I'm just going to mix this in with some epoxy and we'll let her harden and see what happens. All right. Previous experimentation has told me that my furniture wax and this uh, epoxy crap is not compatible, but I'm going to do it just in, in case anyway. But I'm going to do it anyway because I just don't want it to stick. So uh, an ounce of prevention, even if it's not worth much. It shouldn't stick this melamine stuff very, very strongly, I don't think, anyway. So we'll just pour a layer over that and we'll just test. We'll do two strips and see one without and one with. Well, you know, I probably don't even need to do the without it, actually. I kind of know what this stuff is like. It's hard, hard, hard stuff. So if we get any sort of malleability out of it afterwards, we'll know we're onto something. And I'm running out of mixing containers here. So we're using a tofu container and I'm just going to do this by, oh, you know, weight instead of volume. I assume that's all right. These are probably have close enough densities maybe <laughs> maybe not all right 44 delicious grams of part a and we'll go 
to. Uh, okay, come on. Close enough. Oh, yeah, not exactly right. 88 grams, 89. Now, that's not a lot of solvent. And I've famously changed my mind. I do want to just... Uh, I do want to compare it to un diethylphthalate contaminated epoxy. So we'll mix this up, dab a little bit on our test sheet, and, um, and then mix in the diethylphthalate. Give it another good mix. So you might be asking yourself, what's the point? And the answer to that, of course, is there is none. Other than I was just curious if it would be possible. Okay, homogeneous enough for my tastes. So we'll just take the unadulterated stuff and we shall smear some on there. And now we shall move on to adding diethyl phthalate. Now I'm wondering if <laughs> there's probably not even enough to measure, but shall we see if we can? Come on. Yeah, not, not even a gram. Not even a gram. Let me see. I want to take a bit more out. Well, that will be fun. I have these, I have these colored ones too. Let's crack one of these. Oh, geez, I think I just cracked it. Yeah, so we won't even make it to a gram, which. So that's going to be. I won't know what kind of percentage diethyl phthalate is going to be in there. Ah oh, well, mixy mixy. Gee, this will peel off of here and we can test how malleable the substance is. And if we're not, well, that's the way she, that's the way it goes. Uh, one of those little, you know those nori sheet things that you can, little snack things. Don't throw anything away, people. You'll need it all. Okay. Let the experimenting begin. All right, it's 24 hours later, and let's find out if glow stick goo is enough to loosen up the bonds in epoxy and make it flexible. Oh boy. All right, so here we have unadulterated epoxy. This was the mid-grade stuff and this was the high test stuff. I don't think I showed this on camera, but that's quite a bit of the diethyl phthalate in it. So let's start with this. Let's see if we can get this off. Oh, it comes off quite nicely. And, ooh, actually this has some uh, of its own pliability. So that's what our base material is like. Let's go to the second one here. Oh, holy crap. That is uh, rather malleable, I say. I was expecting this to be harder though. Nevertheless, and now for the third. Oh, look at that. This is like, oh my God. That's crazy. This is, uh, this is super soft. You know, it's, it's cured, it's dry, but good God, that's amazing. Actually, I can't actually, I'm a little surprised it worked. Um, you know, I didn't actually expect this to work as well as it did. This was, uh, let's just see, when you thicken this up though, what the heck happens to that? I assume it becomes, yeah, it makes a very nice impression of the bottom of that thing, I tell ya. 
Yeah, this is just too thick to do anything with, really. But, on thin scales, this is, this is actually a, quite astonishing. Um, yeah, it's such a soft plastic. It's quite nice, actually. What would I compare it to? Uh, sort of about the softness of, like, a rubber glove, perhaps? Something like that. Amazing! Wow. Okay, well, there you go. Um, I guess uh, we can call this one solved. You can use the guts of a glue stick to soften up your plastic, should you have need for that. Now, I can't actually think of any particular application at this point, but, you know, like most stuff, keep it in mind, because you never know when you might want something like that, right? So, thanks for watching. Cheers.